All right, so first video Art wanted to know or have was uh, working with MIDI drums. But instead of doing that, I'm going to show you how the basics of MIDI works in Reaper. So what I have here is a, an empty Reaper project. So I just fired up Reaper, and here it is. It's empty. So whether you're working with MIDI drums or MIDI keyboards or MIDI anything, the process is pretty much the same. So let me give you the basics of how that's going to work, okay? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a track. So I have a, short, a keyboard shortcut that I set up for insert new track, which is control T. That might even be the default, but I'll just do it by right clicking over here in the track in this in this area here, which is known as the TCP or the track control panel. So I'll right click in there and say insert new track. So it inserted a new track. And uh, the thing you have to remember in Reaper, unlike other DAWs, and this is one of the one of the key things that's different from Reaper, is a track is a track. A track can have MIDI, it can have audio, it can have both. It can even have video if you want to. But we're going to do MIDI here. All right. So I'm just going to call this. Uh, we're going to call this MIDI drums, and I'm just going to keep this this particular project around, and we'll just add on to this project as as we go. So I'm just going to put MIDI MIDI frums. Well, how about MIDI drums? Because I'm just kind of anal that way. All right. So MIDI drums. So the ba the first thing you got to do is you create a track like I just did, and you can right click on the record button. And what you want to do is you want to say input MIDI. Now, my input MIDI here is going to look different from yours because I have different MIDI stuff set up in Reaper. And I can go through the preferences on how MIDI is set up in Reaper for the for the global setup. We can do that later. But in the it, let's assume in the meantime that you've got your MIDI device all set up. Okay? So what I would do normally is I would say I want to use my Profire MIDI because that's what my keyboard is hooked up to, or my uh, drum pad thing is hooked up to a, a, a different MIDI channel. But right now, my MIDI keyboard is dead. So I'm going to use my virtual MIDI keyboard. Okay, And that's in Reaper. Reaper comes with a virtual MIDI keyboard. And what I usually do, because I generally tend to set up a single instrument per MIDI track, is I just say all channels. Now, you can pick any one of 16 channels if you want to, just like is the MIDI standard. And the MIDI standard for drum recording is channel 10 if you want to export a MIDI file. But don't worry about that for now. You just basically pick all channels. Okay? And that's basically all you have to do at this point. You arm the track. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, go up here to view, and I'm going to look at the virtual MIDI keyboard which is right here now. And you'll notice it's just kind of a, a keyboard uh, a keyboard representation with the keys tied on the on the actual computer keyboard to MIDI. And this is this works. Uh, it's not touch sensitive and it's a little hard to get around in, but it'll get you where you need to go. At any rate, so if I hit this C, you'll notice up on the on the uh, track that it's getting signal. That's a MIDI signal. Okay? It's pretty not uh, it's not terribly exciting, right? So when you're working with MIDI drums, um, it doesn't really matter which drum machine you use. All the keys correspond to each piece on the kit. So like, and there's a standard for this. And C3 is generally your kick drum. Um, X3 is usually your snare. And and uh, the C3 here, or C, I should say, on your keyboard which is actually C3, which makes that very confusing, is usually your hi-hat, okay? But I don't have it, but you'll notice we're not hearing anything. All right, so now what you'd want to do when you're doing MIDI anything is you'd want to add a synth, okay? And I don't have any hardware synths. I use strictly software synths, and they're known as VSTIs, or Virtual Studio uh, Instruments, I believe is, is what, they're, what they're there for. And so to add a, a MIDI instrument, you just click on, on the effects bin here, all right, and your all of your plugins will come up. And you'll notice, by the way, that I have a rather large amount of plugins here. Oops. That, uh, yeah, because since I do uh, a lot of Reaper work, I get a lot of plugins sent to me for testing. So at any rate, what I would do is I would click on instruments. Okay, and this will give you your VSTIs and your VST3Is if you've got Reaper 5. And 
what I use for drums almost exclusively is Easy Drummer 2. And you can use this in any DAW um, that uh, will use VSTIs. It does have an RTAS and an audio. It doesn't have audio units yet, I don't believe, but it does have RTAS and TDM. So if you want to use it in Pro Tools, um, but and it it comes with Mac. It comes in Mac flavors and PC flavors. And so I'm going to go ahead and just insert that by dragging that up here, and we give it a second, and it will open up Easy Drummer. It takes a, takes a second because it's a big plug-in. Da, 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 da. And there is Easy Drummer. All right. So again, remember, you can use any drum machine you want. If you want to use you know, Native Instruments Battery or uh, Superior Drummer or Addictive Drums or anything else, the process is still the same. You create the track, you arm MIDI, and you can record MIDI. And so right now, um, on Easy Drummer, if I hit this kick drum, you can hear I'm getting a kick drum and a snare and a hat and all my toms are there. And... Uh, they, you know, I don't know how well my webcam is, is my webcam microphone picks up the quality of that, but they sound really, really, really good. So anyway, the nice thing about Easy Drummer is that you can use patterns to build your song. And there's a browser feature in here. And let me tell you that the browser alone and the search function alone in Easy Drummer 2 is worth the 149 bucks to buy it. If you're going to buy a drum machine and you're going to be doing MIDI in a real DAW other than GarageBand, this is the one to use. And for Gary, there is a way to hook Easy Drummer up to your MIDI kit and you basically don't ever, you don't record the sounds at all. You just record MIDI and it plays everything. So, in the browser, I can go and look for uh, you know, a pattern and I can actually preview the pattern here. So I'll just go here to a verse, and if I click this, I can preview what that sounds like. All right? So again, I'm going to hit this really fast. All drum machines work a little differently, but the way Easy Drummer works is you can actually drag this pattern down here into your uh, into this editor. And so basically what you can do is you can create patterns here in Easy Drummer and then play them back to test them. And so you can see there's the hi-hat tip and then here's a hi-hat edge and I'll show you the transition on this too. It's pretty it's pretty sweet. So and you basically can sit there and drag and drop until your heart's content you have an entire song built. Then the other nice thing about Easy Drummer 2 is that you can communicate with it like you kind of like you would with a real drummer. So if you build if you use your building block here uh, you can actually click this little up arrow and say, well, I want my, I want an opening hit on that, on that crash. And I want the power hand, which is going, which is easy drummer nomenclature for the, the constant ostinato pattern that the, that the drummer would use. I want to make it the ride symbol. And so what I just did was I changed this to be a ride symbol based pattern with an opening crash. And if I play it, you'll hear it. So... All right, so again, I don't want to make this an easy drummer tutorial, but that's how that works. And when you're all done building your song, you basically select all the stuff by dragging it and selecting all of it. And here's how cool it is. You take this pattern and you drop it right out here onto the track. Okay, that's it. That's basically it. And then what I do is I, I would remove it. And I'd remove it from the, from the building block because I'm going to have the, the DAW play it. Okay, so once that's done, I can close this. It's still on the track, and I can go ahead and I can just hit play, and there's my MIDI track. Now, Art was wondering about some standards. What I generally tend to do is I tend, if I've got a 4-4 tune, it really doesn't matter if it's in 4-4 or 6-8 or whatever, I generally tend to start the tune on bar 3 of the song, um, and that's so that I can put a, I can give a 2-bar click by selecting the metronome and when I hit play, once my controller decides to wake up, I get two bars of nothing and the track will start. And that's basically how that works. Now, I open this MIDI keyboard up to show you how you can actually play the patterns in and you can by recording uh, MIDI, but you'll notice right now that I have uh, record monitoring set on auto and I'll explain what that is in a minute. But if I hit these notes, I'm actually playing the Easy Drummer sounds. So you could, 
you could create a keyboard or you could use your keyboard to create a MIDI track if you want to of drums or you can this could just as easily be input from an electronic drum kit or pads like I've got a Korg Nano pad but Ian's got it right now and uh, I can sit there and tap the patterns in or I can overdub stuff if I want to and all this is when you're at the end of the day here all this is is a MIDI file and I will tell you now that Reaper's MIDI editor kind of sucks I don't like the way it looks it's kind of it's it's a little difficult to use but it does get the job done and it you can you know change notes you can draw in other patterns like if I want to put this E flat which is a snare and I want to put it there I can and I can play it and I talked right over that but here I mean you can do whatever you want to do um, at any rate that's the basics of using MIDI now I can go into some more advanced concepts about how you can split this out and actually feed this drum track to individual snares, toms, hi-hats, and everything else because Reaper has a feature called multi-out, as does Easy Drummer. Um, but I'll show that in a different video. So this will get you started, all right? And if you wanted to put keyboards on a track, it's the same exact process. So I can turn this off. I'll add another track. I'll say I want this to be MIDI, to, to record MIDI. I'll say... Profire, which is my audio interface, whatever, and I will grab another instrument. In this case, I'm going to add Easy Keys by Tune Track, and it's a this is your basic VSTi synth, and this comes with a bunch of different stuff. So I've got like a grand piano. Um, this is the thing that we're probably going to be using a lot, which is a Mellotron, and you can actually change, you know, if you want to make this a choir. Yeah, you can do all that, and but the process is still the same. I can either record it from a keyboard, and um, this is something that's endemic to all the easy stuff, right? By Tune Track, is uh, you can actually go and say, I want to browse patterns for for various things. So if I go, uh, I don't know what this is going to be. All right, so if I drag, if I take this pattern and I drag it here to build the song, or I drag it out here. Uh, without building the song, it's the same process, and viola. That's actually kind of cool. I mean, I just did that in about three and a half seconds. That's the basics. Um, we'll do more, and we'll do more on standards and everything else, but that's how you work with MIDI. And to work with audio, if you want to record audio, it's the same thing. You create a track. You say what you want to arm it from by right-clicking on the on the record button. And you go, I want to do input mono, or I want to do input stereo. I have 16 channels of in here, so I can pick anything I want. And by default, it's set up as a mono track. And if I hit record, I don't have a mic plugged in, but if I hit record, um, it would record audio. And I can show you that by just doing it. It's recording. Now, I didn't have anything plugged in there, but if I did, if I had a microphone, you would have heard that. So that's the basics, guys. Uh, hopefully that'll get you started, all right? And Art just sent an email saying there's a ton of video help out there, and there is a ton of video help out there. I can uh, get some links together and shoot those in an email to you, uh, but there you have it, all right? All right, guys, there's video number one.